After escaping from the Hunters of Pittsburgh, Joel, Ellie, Henry, and Sam make their way through a sewer system outside the city and discover they aren't the only people to have passed through here. Although the previous residents are nowhere to be found, the party gets enough clues and hints from the environment to give them an idea of what happened to the people here, what their story was. It's a story that shows what good people are capable of doing when they band together. It's one that shows the harshness of the world in the aftermath of the cordyceps brain infection. And ultimately, it's one that shows the resilience of the human spirit. How even when everything in the world has done its best to break someone down and make them give up, they can still find something to fight for. It all starts with a man named Ish. When the cordyceps brain infection raged across America, wiping out the populace, most people scrambled to quarantine zones in cities to find some sort of sanctuary. But Ish was a fisherman and took to the sea for his asylum. It proved a good idea and he was safe for some time, but not forever. Dwindling supplies and a boat in disrepair eventually forced his return to the mainland. He beached his boat near the city of Pittsburgh and had his share of run-ins with the infected as he neared the city. Yet, it wasn't the bloodlust of these monsters that surprised him most, but that of his fellow man. The non-infected left in the city that went around hunting down and killing other survivors. Officially, these hunters were taking the goods of those they killed so that they themselves could survive, a sort of survival of the fittest type lifestyle. But others seemed to relish in the hunt, delighting in the slaughter of those they ought to be helping. Ish didn't fit in with his ruthless, brutal lifestyle. He was an outsider to these savages, and not very tough, not to mention the moral compromise he would have to undergo in order to fit in. So he found somewhere else to call home until things could get sorted out. The network of sewers that wound their way through the outside of the city. He thought it suited him better. The limited entrances and exits were easier to defend, and he could lose most anyone in the labyrinthine tunnels of the sewers. Plus, he was used to solitude, having spent so much time alone on his boat. So he passed his time as a self-professed sewer mole man and waited and waited and waited. Things didn't get sorted out up above. It seemed the war for survival between the hunters and the infected was never ending. And though at first he didn't mind his secluded hideout, loneliness began gnawing at him. One day, while scrounging for supplies, he came across a group of people, but unlike those in the city, they didn't immediately attack him. He met with a man named Kyle and learned that they had come from a suburb close to one of the exits of the sewer system. Apparently, looting had become a problem in their neighborhood. The raised voices and gunshots heard regularly had made Kyle fear for the safety of him and his family. Their conversation ended amicably after Ish and Kyle traded some goods with each other and peacefully went their separate ways. But the encounter dwelt with Ish. He considered whether he should invite Kyle and his family to his hideout. It wasn't only the kindness of the man that made him consider, but that he had children with him. The hunters from the city never had children with them. Eventually, his loneliness settled his deliberation. The next day, he approached Kyle and let him in on his secret hideout, offering him a place for him and his family within. After a little deliberation of his own, Kyle joined Ish in the sewers, excited about the prospect of being safely hidden away from the infected and non-infected that prowled his home. What used to be a small hovel occupied by one man was then transformed into a community which very quickly grew in size to house dozens of people that were thankful to have some sort of normality in their lives. They could go to sleep at night without worrying about looters. They could do their chores without fear of infected showing up out of nowhere. Their kids were able to go to school and learn. They were able to play and draw and just be kids. However, they didn't forget the world they lived in now and took steps to safeguard themselves. They had rules that everybody had to follow for the good of the group. They set up alarms to alert the community if some unexpected visitors showed up. 
and they had two protectors, Ish and another man named Danny, that were responsible for keeping the group safe. With these defenses in place, the community and the sewers lived in relative safety. It was like an echo of a time lost, a memory of what the world used to be. It was nice, but also introduced a sense of complacency that proved disastrous for everyone. A door was left open. An honest mistake, and one that usually isn't a problem. But on this occasion, infected made their way through it. Despite the protections they had put in place, the infected were too much, and they raised their way through the camp, killing as they went. In the chaos, Kyle managed to barricade himself in a room with a few of the children. He held out hope that Ish, or Danny, or someone lived through the attack, and they would come to rescue them from this nightmare. But as the sounds of the infected pounding on the door went on and on, only growing louder, he knew it wouldn't come. He looked at the children that were with him, and wanting to spare them with the fate of being torn apart by these monsters, decided to make their end quick. However, not everyone perished at the hands of the attackers. Ish was able to pull out his friend Susan, who was trying to go deeper within to get her kids, as well as a handful of children. They sealed the entrance to the sewers, leaving a warning to those who would consider entering, and escaped to the suburbs from whence they came. They were alive, but they had lost so much. They'd lost their home, their safety, the children had lost classmates, parents. Susan lost her children. They were teetering on the edge. Ish knew. He could see it on their faces. But having seen what they had created, the good they had built, he knew there was hope. So he resolved to be strong. For the kids. For Susan. For mankind. Their ultimate fate unknown the story of Ish and the sewer community of Pittsburgh comes to an end. It's one that showcases the worst of the world of The Last of Us, the indiscriminate monsters that stalk the land, the cruelty people will inflict upon others for their own gain. How even the smallest mistake in this world can cost you everything, but also shows the best of it how humanity can come together to help others for the greater good. That it's possible to rebuild the life they used to have. And how when everything's been taken away from them, humanity can still find something to fight for. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. If there's anything I missed, or if you have any questions or anything, feel free to share. I'd be happy to hear from you. But that's really all I've got for this one. So. Thank you for watching and see you later.